Okay. Um, we, I, I would normally say, I would normally say that, um, we are back. I knew, I knew you, I knew Bezel, Beelzebub was going to use your crutch to get under my skin. Right. Anyway, I would normally say that we are back, but we are really back. How long has it been? Ten weeks. And oh, really? uh, two days. Ten weeks and two days since we've done a show. So that means it's four weeks in a month. Four, eight. There Almost you go. three months. And I'm still recuperating. Uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, that disembodied uh, voice, uh, that mysterious disembodied voice you hear in the background, my co-host, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, was severely injured, and he is uh, still recuperating, but he is able to sit in his behind his desk in his laboratory, in his office, mm -hmm. to do the show. But the, the important thing is he's still alive. <laughs> he's still with us. His voice sounds rich and powerful. And we're going to do this show. Um, this, <coughs> I, I mean, we couldn't do a Halloween special because he was still laid up. We could, Halloween, day, uh, uh, All Souls Day, and Day of the Dead. Couldn't do that. All right. Couldn't do a pre-election um, 2016 show. Unfortunately. So you might as well call this a... Post. A post, a better late than never post uh, Doomsday Election 2016 show. And we are now living in a Trump world. We are now living in a Trump world. Um, but before we get to the... Uh -huh. uh, I even shaved today. In the words of Clint Eastwood, how much for a bath and a shave? Look at that. That'll be 75 cents. I'm waiting for my electric razor to, to arrive. Oh. Before, and then try that out. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the master of the close shave. I, 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 I like to go up against the grain, but the blade must be very sharp. And mm -hmm. my, my brother-in-law was right. If you soak your razor blades in isopropyl rubbing alcohol, it keeps them sharp much longer. Mm. I'm going a month already on the same Wilkinson sword blade. Cool. Anyway, I don't want to digress too much. Um, I'm your host of uh, this show, which is Progressive Discussions. I'm James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and then I already introduced. Uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, and uh, let me let me uh, first uh, do a little Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh, this week, Chisler's Hall of Shame would like to induct Bank of America. Shame on you, Bank of America! But but it, 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 what I'm going to tell you is typical corporate America. I had a funny feeling that once Bank of America. Um, modified their ATM machines uh, and gave it more abilities. Uh oh. Many abilities of normally that a teller would do. I knew down the road they were going to lay off tellers. Well, this is the scenario I found when I walked into Bank of America early last Friday, no. Friday afternoon, early Friday afternoon, my local Bank of America, I walk in, and lo and behold, I see a very, very long line of angry, frustrated people in front of the ATM. Every weekend, especially holiday weekends, one of the two ATMs breaks down. Oh, gee. So there's a long line there, but that's not what puzzled me. I walk into the building, and I see only one teller scheduled to work then I asked them and they go oh no no just me oh really mm -hmm. interesting then I look over and I notice there's no drive-through well guess what 
a corporate as a corporate decision Bank of America decided to permanently close uh, their drive-through lay off their drive-through tellers no more drive-through tellers at Bank of America so you have no drive-through you have a long line at inside you have no teller I told them you know when somebody owns a business and they walk into a bank usually they have a lot of transactions mm. usually they need to pick up money in certain denominations and they have a lot of business to do it ties up the line with the regular folk the, yeah the people with the bags right when they bring the bags right. right I says why don't you why don't you I told the manager why don't you have a teller that takes care of just business <laughs> transactions? Yeah, he's smiling. He's <laughs> Indian guy. He's bowing. He's smiling. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, James, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. Like, sure. Like, it's going to get done. Well, this is it. This is your corporate America. Do not believe any commercial from corporate America that tells you how much they care about their consumers and customer service because there is no such thing and now that the Republicans have oh. complete control you're going to see even less regulations they on can't business. wait to get at Dodd-Frank and get rid of those regulations now now that prevent the banks from doing what they did now in 2008 one or two things can happen uh, Donald Trump can end up becoming a um, a, uh, a, a ultra right wing uh, a, a demon and side with the uh, Congress and the Senate and, and, and appoint a lot of right wing idiots to his cabinet and to the Supreme Court and to the Supreme Court or, or co column that was column A column yeah. B is because Donald Trump is considered non establishment mm -hmm. maybe he is much smarter and more compassionate than we originally thought but he just he's he's the president-elect I I don't want I don't have a crystal ball in front of me I don't want to uh, uh, go off half-cocked and make accusations but a lot of people are protesting and violently so they're panicking they're freaking out but you know what uh, from what I understand after his meeting with Barack Obama, he does not want to repeal Obamacare. No, not all of it. He wants to keep the, the one where the, the kids can stay on their policy at 26, and if you have a pre-existing condition. Now, but now the rest of it is probably up. Until, until he finds... See, Donald Trump is a type of guy, uh, unlike... Uh, other Republicans. He's the type of guy that will hear out what you have to say. He'll, he'll hear you out. He'll, he'll, he'll sit and listen to the experts and then he will make a final decision based on what he has learned. Where a Republican will just say, oh I don't want to talk to the scientists. No, 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 the North Pole, uh, the Arctic is not melting. No, climate change is, is baloney. I don't want to talk. Arr, arr. He won't well, how come Santa Claus is doing Fiat commercials to buy cars then? And he, he said his trading is on the roof. <laughs> well, uh, hey, did you know Rudolph is really uh, 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 Bill Clinton? Ha! Uh -huh, he looks like him. <laughs> okay, now. Jesus. That's that. Shame on you, Bank of America. Um, yes, I am very disappointed, but... Uh, <laughs> My hands are clean because I voted green, and I'm wearing my green Izod out of respect and honor of, and, and also, um, yeah, yeah, out of respect and honor of the Green Party. All right. Jim I mean Stein, green. Um, who nobody ever heard of. Right. Now, this is, this is the problem. Better prepare them for that... Uh, when the blower comes Oh out. yeah, the the furnace. Because it's, it's cold here. The winds are of November have finally come early. Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, it's cold out. It's cold out. Uh, but what what happened was, you see, after Bernie Sanders got screwed over by the DNC, you didn't see all these people rioting and protesting. You didn't see any of that. 
they only do that because Hillary Clinton supposedly got the popular vote mm -hmm. and and Trump got the electoral votes, the electoral college, which I think they should abolish. Should have a long time ago. It has nothing to do with the modern world. Along with the super delegates in the Democratic Party. Just do across the board popular vote. Now it's only fair. So what happened was nobody should Bernie Bernie uh, nobody was uh, enraged when Bernie Sanders got screwed over. Only when Hillary Clinton uh, the you know the wicked witch of Wall Street <laughs> got uh, screwed over uh, got, got didn't get well uh, lost to Donald Trump. Now that was her problem. Now well WikiLeaks I thought WikiLeaks Julian Assange uh, saying what well, an anonymous were going to help hold on. I thought they were going to help out Jill Stein. Oh no, they ended up helping out Donald Trump. Uh, he, you know, I mean, the truth is great. Don't get me wrong, but uh, if it wasn't for Anonymous and WikiLeaks, I think it might have been a different story with the election. But then again, America is more divisive and racist than we originally thought, and maybe Trump would have won anyway, uh, regardless. I mean, uh, uh, the the media didn't say a word about Jill Stein. Okay, he, uh, much less than Bernie. The only reason why Bernie was was mentioned in the mainstream media is because of the massive amounts of people that showed up at Bernie Sanders rallies. Now, why couldn't those massive amounts of people flock over to Jill Stein and the Green Party? They didn't do it. How come those massive amounts of people did not bother to riot and protest in anger when Bernie Sanders got screwed by the DNC? The DNC shot themselves in both feet because, you know, the DNC didn't go over the winner. If they would have, if they would have kept things honest, and um, and if they would have nominated Bernie Sanders, you know, it would have been a different story. It would have been a totally different because, story because Hillary Clinton could not ever do away with the fact that she was a she was duplicit. She was one way in public and another way in private yeah. with the banks well wall street the the oligarch all the fat cats that control the oligarch right so they didn't know, trust her they all wanted hillary clinton because they were she is the best puppet they can find right now yeah. they went with her the dnc didn't do the right thing and they went with the oligarch too Barack Obama and his team, uh, Loretta Lynch, uh, Comey, the whole kit and caboodle of them, they protected Hillary Clinton. It's all obvious, you know, uh, 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 like Jesse Ventura says, just follow the money trail. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that. Corruption. Um, to the bone. Yeah. Oh, incidentally, uh, Jesse Ventura d did admit that True TV screwed him over with the uh, the show conspiracy theory. Uh, yeah, he went. Yeah, they pulled it off off the air. So, um, but um, he also told a story that I, I I was listening to a YouTube video. Somebody very close to him who had epileptic seizures seizures that was not helped by medical doctors and drugs. He went to Colorado with this loved one of his and. Uh, this person received medical marijuana and it's been a long time now the person is cured of the epileptic seizures due to medical marijuana so I just want to salute the hemp plant the marijuana plant I believe five other states have voted for it to be legal yeah well in we'll, the state let's see what happens with the fed hey when you have the right wing in charge of the federal government you might as well think of uh, things like uh, prohibition uh, the suffrage movement um, uh, JP Morgan and, and the way he screwed over no regulation yeah well I there uh, you know there's a show on the History Channel called the, the men who built America and they show you just how ruthless and greedy and, and, and wicked those men were not only to the employees, uh, uh, but to each other. They stabbed each other in the back. J.P. Morgan was the worst. 
he was the biggest conniver. He was like, uh, he reminded me of J.R. Ewing in, in uh -huh. Dallas. <laughs> God rest his soul, Larry Hagman. Yeah, he reminded me of J.R. Ewing. They're all the same. And this is capitalism. What I'm trying to get at is this is capitalism. This is how it is. Capitalism. Capitalism. Now, um, so the birdie, look, the grassroots revolution did not fail you, the American people, you, the progressives, let's say. The grassroots revolution did not fail the progressives. You, progressives, failed the grassroots revolution. That's what happened to the Bernie Bird. Now, see, right there? see this, see this uh, poor soul? This is what's left of the Bernie Sanders bird, the Bernie bird. See? This is what's left of actually Bernie Sanders. A carcass. It's a carcass. Let me... Bones, that's it. Come here, baby. Not even a carcass. Maybe from the great beyond I can get some... Wisdom. Oh, the spirit of the Bernie bird. He's in the room with us. What? What's that? Yeah, I know. I know the DNC screwed you guys over. Yeah, I know uh, Bernie Sanders wimped out and sold out. Yeah, that, oh, that rap. Oh, he's pissed at Bernie Sanders. I know you you, 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 you did a lot for him. You, you, you landed on his podium in, uh, what was it, Portland, Oregon? And then... Bernie's waving his hands around and he decided to fly away because you, you might get hit by his hand. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we could resurrect you someday and uh, and you could... Uh, okay, you officially have switched to the Green Party. The hell with Bert, the hell with Drysack Sanders. Okay. Poor thing. Poor Bernie Bird. Let's get a good close-up of, of poor Bernie Bird. It's like a little bit like Rodan, the face, right, from the, God, from the Godzilla movies? Yeah, the poor Bernie Bird, the poor pathetic Bernie Bird. I don't know, I don't know how, if he's strong enough to, to, to perch on my shoulder. Nah, he's, he's still weak, he's still too, oh, no, he's, no, yeah, he's still too weak. But anyway, poor thing, poor, poor pathetic Bernie Bird, you were betrayed. You will be. Yeah, I'll, I'll lift his wings up. Maybe it'll lift his spirit. <laughs> Poor little Bernie Bird. Now, I know I'm going to get heat for the Bernie Bird. Let me tell you something. There's somebody out there that's reporting to uh, my friend who retired, by the way. We had his retirement party. William H. Morrill III has officially retired from doing commercial voiceovers. Okay, so. Have a very prosperous retirement. It was great having you for all those years. Very loyal uh, uh, employee. But I, you know, I still have coffee with him. Somebody's telling him that our show, criticizing and, and mocking our show, saying that we're not professional. Let me tell you something. As you can see around me, this is a grassroots revolution show. That's why it looks the way it does. We're we're not establishment. We don't suck up to the corporation, to the fat cats. We're not co company men. We're not company kiss asses. We're not sycophants. So you can go fuck yourself, whoever it is that that is looking at unimportant aspects of our show instead of concentrating on the content of our show only. The content. Look at the content. Talk a lot of shit, man. People out there talk a lot of shit. Let me tell you something. Okay, now. Seven bells before we begin our show after a long period of absence. Hey, and you know what? I get up a lot. I sure do get up a lot because I have things to do on this show. I was criticized for getting up too much. It doesn't look professional. Yeah, does this look professional? What the hell does getting up have to do with professional? Professional means... Gotta be you're stiff. Get, professional means only one thing. You get money for what you do. Period. Well, then this is a person... This is a person is all... 
Well, this this is an individual who's uh, grew up in a corporate environment, anti-union uh, corporate environment, and uh, you know, uh, yeah, money is a big thing with them. But I, you know, I says, what do what these people want me to do? Look stiff and stuffy like Walter Cronkite or or Peter Jennings or whatever, or Ted Koppel or, or with the suit and the talking head. I gotta be a freaking talking head. Come on. No, what you gotta do is not listen to them. Jesse Ventura doesn't worry about what people think when he wears his tie-dyed shirt. That's for sure. When he does the show wearing a tie-dyed uh, t-shirt. Yeah, that's correct. He don't give a rat's ass. Go fuck yourselves. That's anyway, correct. seven bells before we begin. Go ahead. Seven bells or seven women. Yeah, that the harem that uh, they promised the uh, is. Uh, you know what? They're still using the word Islam, uh, radical Islam. Yes, they are. They are. They, it, it, it is. If you know the English language, the correct word is extremist. That's correct. Oh, we're doing pretty good on time. I am a man who enjoys playing chess. Oh, you're starting off light this time, huh? A cup. Well, we got you know the, the what the hell do we really have in in in, 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 in politics? No, it's over. The damage is already done. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> it's finished. All right, go ahead. A couple of days ago, I was playing a game of chess against a woman who put me in a very serious trouble from the start. Really? To avoid the pain and embarrassment of being checkmated, I tried to resign. Ooh, the pain, the pain, Will Robinson. Ooh, the pain. <laughs> People resign in chess in order to avoid the embarrassing endgame. It is the mercy rule of chess. Capitulate. However, my opponent would not accept my surrender. Interesting. She wanted to see me squirm. She must have been a feminist. She must have been a, a carpet munching Hillary Clinton supporter. She wanted to checkmate a man. See, the, yeah, the, the, see the mentality. This is these are the same people protesting because Hillary lost. I felt very embarrassed that she was moving closer to the final mating. Yeah, not then, the, not the mating you're thinking about. She announced that she was going to use her female piece, the queen. <laughs> to castrate him. To execute the mating. Oh my gosh, she had to use the queen. Oh, she was making a point. She then placed her queen up against my king, Ooh. smothering my king. Mm, that, that sounds like fun. Really? Oh, was she obese? In front of several girlfriends, Ooh. she declared... Menage a trois? Checkmate. Oh, okay. This was extremely embarrassing for me. She had a malevolent uh, agenda, right? Chess <laughs> is the only game that has a special word to announce doom for the defeated person. I conceded defeat to her again. Very embarrassing. How do you feel about the response of my opponent and her girlfriends? They're I think my opponent should have accepted my intent to resign. They're dykes. They're man-haters. This is what Amy Dickinson says. Okay. Your sex, your chess games <laughs> seem more sexually violent than Game of Thrones. Sounds very erotic to me. I understand why you felt so violated. <laughs> I shared your question with Daniel Lucas, editor of Chess Life magazine, who answers as follows. The Russian-born grandmaster Sevely Tartakower wrote, No game was ever won by resigning. While it is true you should fight to the bitter end, there can come a point where the game is hopelessly lost. And in that case, most players on the winning side find it rude if their opponent continues to play on. Resignation is expected. There is no such thing in chess as not accepting resignation. The next time you are facing a lost game, offer your opponent a firm handshake and say, I resign. Good game. You can even punctuate this by tipping your king over. 
If your opponent insists that you play on, it's perfectly acceptable to say, I resigned. The game is over. Congratulations on your win. Then get up and walk away. A player should be gracious in his victory. A sportsman would not gloat, but would respond with, thank you. Good game to you, too. And then engage in a friendly post-mortem, where the <laughs> what-ifs can be analyzed. This helps turn the game from a pure one or loss equation into a positive learning experience for both players. You know, I'm glad you brought up chess at the beginning because it's it's really it's really uh, uh, amazing that you you did bring up such an article because I was going to state that uh, it was it's like it has been confirmed that the three dimensional uh, chessboard on the old Star Trek series is not a real game. Uh, Nimoy just here's Nimoy. Nimoy just uh, moved pieces around for the show. It is not a real... But, however, there is an actual three-dimensional chess board. But and it doesn't look like the one on the Star Trek series. No. And, 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 and it was not... It's not an actual game. So, anyway. Say goodbye. If Nimoy. you... Nimoy are among the 50% of Americans who do not take multivitamins regularly, uh -oh. here is an important reason to add one to your daily routine. <clears throat> A brand new study finds that guys who popped one regularly for 20 years or longer can cut their risk for heart disease by 46%. Yeah. Now you're not going to get uh, all the nutrients in, in the the one-a-day multivitamin mineral uh, 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 formula, you're not going to get a sufficient amount of the nutrients except for maybe uh, some of the minerals and, and possibly be complex but other than that, C, E... Yeah, you need your food. Yeah, uh, well, you they need... work with food. You need to take other supplements That's right. around the multivitamin. Yes. Like I, my multivitamin happens to be right now uh, Nature's Way Alive for uh, older men. And I have enough zinc, I have enough selenium in there. B complex isn't bad. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, copper, you know, uh, 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 a lot of the minerals are sufficient, not the macro minerals. But forget about vitamin E, it's pathetic. Uh, yeah, vitamin well, C is pathetic. Yeah. You know, but you got you got to take those separately. Yeah. All right, go ahead. We know multivitamins have gotten a bad rap in recent years, and it's true that some studies haven't found a benefit. But plenty have, and by and large, the longer a study tracks the benefits, the more benefits are revealed. And we think it's interesting that this long-term study flew below the media radar not getting the attention it deserved. We've added it to our top five reasons to say yes to a daily multivitamin. Number one, lower the risk for heart disease. In this study, 18,350 men from the Harvard-affiliated Brigham and Women's Hospital those who stuck with their multivitamin habit enjoyed lower rates of life-threatening cardiovascular heart attacks and strokes. They also were 14% less likely to need artery clearing surgery. A 2015 study found a similar benefit for women with a 46% lower risk for fatal heart disease in multivitamin takers. Well, the multivitamin is part of the uh, basic <laughs> nutrition program, the hub of the wheel. Correct. 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 It's part of it. Number two, cancer protection. A multivitamin reduced overall cancer risk by 8% and 18% for men over 70. In another study, this habit also 
cut by 14%, women's odds for developing colon growths called adenomas that can morph into colon cancer. Yeah. Number three, fewer cataracts. Okay. A study published in Ophthalmology tracked the eye health of nearly 15,000 male physicians. Half took a common daily multivitamin, as well as vitamin C, vitamin E, and beta carotene. Those are the antioxidants. Well, be careful of the beta carotene. There's, uh, yeah, the fake crap. Don't get the synthetic beta carotene. Yeah. And half had a placebo. The vitamin takers reduced their risk of cataracts by 9% and of nuclear cataracts, that is clouding in the middle of the eye, related to aging, by 13%. Number four, guard against drug-related nutrient gaps. A multi may be especially important if you are among the millions of people who take a diuretic. Oh. Well, that washes the you know, vitamins out. An acid-blocking proton pump inhibitor, like Prilosec and those things. What do you call it? Lasix? The, the, the Lasix is a diuretic. The common that is diuretic. Correct. Or the diabetes drug, metformin. Yeah, hey, smoking and drinking uh, eats up nutrients. And coffee? Vital nutrients. Coffee is a diuretic. You know, they have different... Water, too, is. Well, you know, I mean... Well, hey, you, you put that much liquid in your body, well, you're yeah, going to pee. It's going to go out, yeah. Um, some types of diuretics can deplete potassium, a mineral important for blood pressure control, and healthy muscle function. PPIs can reduce levels of vitamin B12 which helps your body make red blood cells, nerve cells, and the body's genetic material. And metformin can lower magnesium, which helps with blood pressure yeah. control. Not to be c confused with George Foreman yeah. and, and his grill. A healthy brain and spine for babies. A multivitamin with folic acid, if taken before and during pregnancy, can help women of childbearing age protect their future children from autism spectrum disorders by as much as 40%, and from brain and spinal cord defects and childhood cancers. You want to really protect your baby, uh, your baby's health, uh, also from having to, to give them toxic vaccines, Ooh. breastfeed the child at least within the, f the first week of birth yeah. for that colostrum. Because the Get baby, those two days of colostrum. The yeah. baby needs colostrum to develop its immune system for the rest of its life. Yeah. Okay, and the colostrum is only produced the first uh, few days after birth in a mammal. Since 50% of pregnancies are unplanned, Taking your multi-daily is a good idea. If you do become pregnant, talk with your doctor about other prenatal vitamins. Well, the truth is, no multi can replace the natural nutrients in a healthy diet. But, <laughs> if your plate's not perfect at every meal, a multi plus a few additional smart supplements is a great insurance policy. Go for a basic multivitamin. Skip the mega doses. Choose a multi with key nutrients, including vitamins A, C, D, E, and K, as well as potassium, zinc, and iodine. You're not, you're not going to get that much in the multi. This person is obviously orthodox. This is Dr. Oz. Dr. Raz is saying skip the megas and, and yeah. get a multi with all the... But the dosages are, are suboptimal in some of the things he mentioned. You know, I, he 
He's a surgeon. I mean, I just want you to know. He's a heart surgeon. Yeah. He's a cardio surgeon, and uh, Oprah Winfrey took a liking to him, so he has his own show. Take half of your multi in the morning, half in the evening to keep levels of water soluble vitamins. Mm. The ones that get eliminated when you urinate. Oh. Now you gotta. <clears throat> also take these. We also recommend a daily calcium of 600 milligrams. That's it. And magnesium 400 milligrams. Well, that's fine, yeah. Supplements as well as 1,000 IU of vitamin D3 daily. Yeah, that, that, that's good. That's good maintenance. Yeah. Add 600 milligrams a day of a super beneficial omega-3 fatty acid. Yes. DHA from fish oil or algal oil supplements. What? That's probably uh, seaweed. Uh, oh, algae. Uh, algal. Al algae, yeah, algae. To cut your risk for vision loss and e early forms of age-related macular degeneration and mental dysfunction, you can add up to 900 milligrams of DHA along with lutein and zeaxanthin supplements. Spinach is very rich in uh, lutein and zeaxanthin, uh, uh, marigold petals, which is calendula. Uh, also, by the spinach. If you if you if you replace your lettuce with raw spinach in your salad, you will be getting lots of lutein and zeaxanthin. And uh, see, this is why omega threes are are part of uh, uh, a, an eye related supplementation program. Omega threes also very good for the brain for seniors is DHA also. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's the the brain food in fish. It's a hell of a lot be yes. better th than aspirin for thinning the blood. And of course, uh, uh, Eliquis, uh, Prodaxin, and and, and the and the and Zarelto. What about the statin drugs? The well, the statins destroy the CoQ10. Coenzyme Q10, yeah, throughout the, the whole body, right? Yeah. So you gotta you gotta replace that if you're gonna get, keep on a statin. Yeah. But they should do away with statins. Yeah, usually um, there's no need for them. The, uh, well, what is what is recommendation uh, for LDL these days? Just just keep a, a low carb diet, no and sugar, fish, fish oils, and stuff of that nature. No, no car. Um, yeah, well, my, my internist uh, <coughs> told me um, omega threes will lower trigly triglycerides, but they won't lower LDL. But that's what he says. I don't know. But how beans will lower the LDL. Yeah. Be uh, and um, soluble, pectin. Soluble fibers. Pectin. Soluble fibers. Yes. Soluble yes. fibers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yes. true. And don't neglect the probiotics. That too. I forgot to take mine yesterday. Very important. Yeah. The gut. They. Uh, uh, some uh, experts are saying that disease starts in in the gut in the lower. Well, it is part of the immune tray. system. Well, like bifidus lives in a lower intestine. Mm -hmm. Bifidus is very uh, helpful, uh, very important for the immune system. Actually, they all are. They all do their part. It's not just acidophilus. You know, like my mother says, oh, give me my acidophilus. I no, says, ma, it's no. not just acidophilus. It's a, it's a wide spectrum. It's a yeah. family. Yeah. We are family. Remember that song? Yeah, it's a whole family, the probiotics. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, I suppose you, uh, you jabroni out there, think that my blackthorn shillelagh is unprofessional. Well, not in Ireland, it's not. <laughs> Fucking bastard. And not when it's knocking somebody in the head. Yeah. People love uh, to talk shit, especially... I have a question. ...when they're not successful. Like, in other words, when they haven't done anything... Uh, uh, when they haven't made it, they uh, they have loads of advice for everybody. I have a question. Yes. Has the person ever seen a show? I mean, really, totally. really listen to the show. Totally. Oh, they also they also uh, bash the newsletter. Yeah, but they don't read it. They don't read it. <laughs> Anybody can bash anything and they don't read it. 
Listen. I mean, what can they say about the God Project? What kind of criticism can they offer there? None whatsoever. Okay, how that's could, part of the newsletter. How could they defend their view if they have nothing to say? Exactly. Or, or, or let's let's just take forget about the newsletter. Let's just take the content of this show alone. I mean, we did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sh of these shows. I mean, if you listen to the content, you would uh, not look at the uh, uh, the lack of a state of the art studio. Yeah, you know I mean? there's people. Uh, I know I know some people who. Uh, Let's just say they watch a uh, political program on TV. Right. They'll criticize the person's hair, the way they dress. Everything. But they're not listening to the content of the fucking show. And these are people that have these so-called state-of-the-art studios. I also know some people who, um, since I've been laid up, you know, I'm laid up under bed. I have to watch at night uh, till I'm it's my time to go to bed. I, I am end, yeah. under, ended up watching uh, uh, Antenna TV and uh, what's that one on 33? Uh, decades? I don't know what it is. There's but anyway, two, there's two has Hogan's these. Heroes on and Alfred Hitchcock and The Twilight Zone and, and, and Carol Burnett and everything like that. So I, I end up watching these programs at night and the person will say to me, oh he's dead. Oh she's dead. And that makes the program bad because they're dead. Because like you know Jack Sue and because Barney Miller's on. And, and, oh, they're dead. And, and the fish and, and they're dead. Oh, who else is dead from them? Who cares? Watch the show. The writers wrote the damn show, and that's what you're supposed to. Does watch. that make Rod Serling any less of a genius? Exactly. Because he died. Exactly. Of course not. Or does that does that discredit Orson Welles, or or you know what I mean? It, it's 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 really a nincompoop statement to make, you know, <laughs> because it's coming from a nincompoop. If it looks like if it looks, walks, and sounds like a duck, it's a duck. Get your ducks in a row. Quack quack. Oh, this one here is um, uh, for New Jersey. Oh yeah, what happened? Tr uh, Trump. Uh, no, no, Trump, no. Trump took remove Chris Christie out of his position. It does involve Christie. Oh, okay. Responding to weeks of complaints by drivers, enduring long lines and frustrating visits to Motor Vehicles Commission offices, Governor Christie moved on Wednesday to make the experience better. And he hopes to cut down traffic at what he admits is one of the least desirable tasks for most New Jerseyans. I'm glad you brought this subject up because I have something to inform you about. Go ahead. You want to do it now or you want to wait till no, the end? No, I'll wait till the end. Appearing at the commission office in Randolph, New Jersey, Christie called the recent problems unacceptable and announced a host of measures aimed at boosting convenience and efficiency. The agency will do away with its online transaction fee beginning October to 1 to encourage people to use its web services. It will also make unspecified enhancements to its online system. Yeah, well, I pay, I, I, I renew my registration online. Your registration. And, yeah. and, and, and but when it comes to your uh, license, they want you to come in so they can take your fucking picture. Yeah, because they don't believe uh, from past uh, from past results. I mean, from from your past, they don't believe that you're really you. Yeah, or you're a terrorist. Come on, that's what it's all about. I mean, I we got people here over 70, 80 years old. They got to renew their their big and uh, they're terrorists. What the hell is going on here? You know what? I got a, I got a, I got a real juicy. Finish this, and I'll tell I'll tell you the motor vehicle story. Beginning next year, a commission will add two mobile agencies, which can go to different areas as needed, allowing drivers to take care of all transactions except titles and testing. Christie proposed that the legislator pa legislature pass. A forward him a bill changing 
the expiration date of registrations and driver's license from the end of the month to the owner's birthday. So it'll be like uh, like those mobile units that take blood. Or yeah, give those uh, check your blood pressure and tests. Yeah, yeah, and everything. yeah. Like, uh, but they're gonna change it from the end of the month to your birthday. Try to cut down on lines. Now, if I had to go to the motor vehicle, and especially in my condition right now, my birthday is February. You're fucked. In the cold of the winter, you know, that is not acceptable yes. to me. Yes, you're an Aquarian child. You're you're a winter baby. Yeah. Wow! Oh, oh, go, finish Christy the has said much of the congestion at agencies is due to last-minute visits at the end of each month, creating unnecessary waits. That, coupled with computer glitches, and there's always a computer glitch at the goddamn motor vehicle. I was on a government website the other day and there was a huge glitch. Oh, Everything I typed, all the text I typed, the whole freaking paragraph was uh, 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 disappeared because I misspelled the word and I had to go back and correct the word and uh, lo and behold everything I typed Way was bye. gone. Bye bye. Like at Facebook, you know, glitches, glitches, unnecessary glitches. Speaking of Facebook. Yeah. Old Mr. Zuckerberg there. Yeah. They are putting on people's pages, etc., that they died. They're putting memorials on there. Obituaries? Yeah. And you're still living? You're dead. But are you still living, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, man. fine. You never want to go to the uh, motor vehicle, Christy <laughs> said. It's not something that you look forward to on the calendar and plan during the week. I'm sure he We would. want to make this easy. The commission is working with computer systems that are decades old and are due for upgrades. Hetty Rosenstein, director for New Jersey's Communications Workers of America Union, was skeptical of Christie's plan to use AAA and another proposal to add express lines for driver's license. AAA, that means privatize it, right? It's already privatized. It's already motor really? vehicle. Oh. Somewhat. And Republicans, they love to privatize which allow residents to bypass identification checks and are already in place in some locations. Now that sounds good. After a decade of smooth sailing for New Jersey drivers, problems at the motor vehicle returned under Governor Christie when he laid off workers and slashed the budget. Rosenstein said in an email, Folks should think twice before rushing to back Christie's call to make security shortcuts by using a private agency for registration and having ID express lanes checked. Never rely on private industry uh, uh, to do it to do it right. Um, they, they, I mean, they may have up-to-date office equipment, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, yeah. First of all, government is not a business. Right, correct. That's the one problem with people who may have voted for Trump because he's a businessman. Okay? That does not make it that he's going to make it in government because government is not a business. Well, hey, Carly Fiorina uh, 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 said nothing but wonderful things about uh, Rockefeller, Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, and... Uh, Frick. Yeah, no, there's another one. Uh, yeah. Wait, uh, wait. Uh, Carnegie, Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Yeah, but I mean, well, they were scumbags. Yeah, exactly. Child labor, no uh, long, very long working hours with very little money, very little pay, no benefits, and no respect for the worker. Uh, yeah, we're doing a show right now. We're on the air. She knows we're doing the show. Oh, well, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? No, but she didn't know because this is the first show. Unbelievable. Christie said last week that although there were one or two agency closings, 
when he first took office, that was not to blame for the recent troubles. Earlier this year, Christie made it a requirement for all agency employees to receive over the next year training designed to reinforce fundamental consumer service skills. Uh, uh, well, this is the story. My mother, who is, um, I guess she's 83 or 84 years old, um, was requested to uh, surrender her uh, driver's license oh. after, after a long period of not driving. Okay. Um, my mother was, at the time, was not able to, uh, to come to the uh, motor vehicle office in person. So my sister says, <coughs> um, could we do this without her uh, physically coming in? They say, no, she has to come in. Yeah. So my sister says, "What about, what about uh, seniors who are really ill that are bedridden and they're on a gur uh, They have to wheel the damn gurney into motor vehicle." They said, "Yes, we we even have old people with uh, with an oxygen tank, oxygen mask." Are you? My sister says, "That is despicably absolutely. That is despicable without compassion." You mean to tell me that disabled people and disabled seniors and seniors that might be terminally ill have to come into motor vehicles in person? And and, and their answer was yes, they all have to come in. Motherfucker! Well, My you know, sister was livid. Under the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, you're supposed to make you a, an accommodation. Even the courts have to make an accommodation. now. I don't see why she couldn't have done it by Skype or video conferencing. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, I have Skype. Yeah. I could have done a video and, and she could have said, uh, hello, my name is so-and-so, uh, my, uh, you know, my, uh, my well, ID, online, ID number is blah, 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 it's me. Hello. It's me. <laughs> I mean, come on. Absolutely. You can't. You can't physically expect everyone to come into the motor vehicle office. But you know, the security guy uh, told me they do wheel people in. With hey, the, I went there in a wheelchair before. No, he saw. He saw a woman with the oxygen. What a what a it's bunch ridiculous. of what a bunch of assholes! How ridiculous that Absolutely is! Absolutely ridiculous and cruel. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And cruel. All right, that's 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 what I wanted to say. All right. How we doing? We almost time for break. No, we're good. I'm Heaven okay. forbid I should get off the seat during the show. We got a lot of time yet. Oh, oh I fuck it. Fuck, fuck yourself. You know, you don't want to pay attention to the content of the show. Go to hell. Ordinarily, I might gloat. Oh, we do have time. Last week, a prominent conservative pundit conceded a point yours truly and countless others have been making for a long time, namely, that in their constant assaults on mainstream news media, conservatives have wrecked the very idea of objective, knowable fact. In effect, they broke reality. And Donald Trump came oozing out of the ruins. Well, I sure didn't want Hillary Clinton. You know, also, and, and Mr. Trump got in there without releasing his taxes. Okay? Well, he probably uh, used the law to his best advantage. He probably finagled. I mean, there is no law that says they have to expose it, but the people should demand it because it tells a lot about the person. Well, uh, and it tells, and and what it tells about him is he hasn't paid taxes in on twenty years. Well, that that's a drop in a bucket compared to what Hil Hillary and Billary did in their political career. That's for damn sure. But they paid taxes. Big fucking deal. And they released their taxes. Not a big deal. But he did not. What about it? What about the overall integrity of the person who's running? 
Well, that's why she lost. Because people could not come to grips with that. Well, people continue to vote for the two-party system. Well, that uh, is really a bad thing. Uh, you know, it's like uh, they, they still haven't... Uh, let's put it this way. The American people collectively, the, uh, the imbecile teabaggers that vote Republican, the ones that don't have a pot to piss in that vote Republican, <laughs> live in shacks, and the progressives that voted for, um, that decided to, that they needed to vote for Hillary, they need to vote Democrat. All of them are afraid and unwilling to accept real change. They are not willing to change the system. They are afra afraid to change the system. Otherwise, they would have voted for Jill Stein. Or Bernie. Or Bernie. Or they they would have backed up Bernie when he got screwed. Yeah. Now, they're, instead, they're, they're all backing up Hillary instead of backing up Bernie Sanders. For God's sakes, you send Bernie Sanders all that money, you show it up at his uh, uh, rallies, uh, enough people where you know it, it looked like it went out to the horizon. Yeah, at I mean, that time he was getting the big things, and even Hillary was not. You totally you you people abandoned the grassroots revolution. Period. They abandoned the change that they wanted. Yes. And every the Hispanics, the blacks, the women, the white women, etc. They all voted for the person who is going to do damage to them. You honestly think today's Democrats are progressive? No. Or liberal? Not you, per oh, se. Yeah. I mean, the people out there that are are, are still spellbound by the two-party system. You you think they're progressive? No way. They're not. They're not at all. I mean, uh, the um, they're corporatists, just like the Republicans. The new the person who's uh, running for to be the new head of the DNC. Is a is a climate change denier, oil company a former oil company lobbyist? I heard. Uh, well, and climate change denier. Howard Dean is looking for the spot. So is Ellison. Ellison is a Muslim, and a progressive. And there's two other ones who who want the the spot. Well, I hope a, a true progressive gets right. the spot. Right. <laughs> and right. Not, and not another corporatist. Right. Right. All right. Go ahead. We have basically eliminated any of the referees, the gatekeepers, said Wisconsin radio host Charlie Sykes in an interview excerpted that was tweeted by Oliver Darcy of Business Insider. The net effect is that Trump will say some stupid thing Sykes knows to be false, but that his listeners still expect him to parrot. And if he doesn't, then suddenly I have sold out. When this is all over, we have to go back. There's got to be a reckoning on all of this. We've, we've created this monster. At a certain point, you wake up and you realize you have destroyed the credibility of any credible outlet out there. As a result, conservatives are reaping the whirlwind. Sykes would want to know he is not backing down from the idea that mainstream news media are biased against conservatism. News media, like any institution created really? by human hands, really? harbor biases, wow. including against the political right. I think so. I still remember the light that went on in my head when a conservative media critic to describe those who hold staunch right-wing views. Staunch. After all, when's the last time you heard someone on the left called an arch-liberal? So they really think the U.S. media is 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 a liberal by and bias. <laughs> well, th what they're doing is, you see, they're forgetting that liberalism and conservatism are both character traits. They are characterology. So if you are a, let's say, a liberal, and you work for a newspaper, you have the liberal viewpoint, no? You certainly ain't going to have a conservative viewpoint. 
No, like... Um, so it's not a bias, per se. Like democracy now. If you work for democracy now, you are going to be a true progressive. Yeah. Because that is the nature of the organization. Hmm. The ACL, uh, ACLU, you're going to be... Well, the NAACP ain't going to have Ku Klux Klan in there, are they? Yeah, NAACP. Huh. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, it's expected that everyone is progressive. Um, but the problem is, uh, you know, the hell with partisan politics. It, it should be about doing the right thing. Oh, yes. Just yes. doing the right thing. Things. Yes. That's one example. There are others. But instead of calling out biases in the mainstream media structure or simply creating a parallel media structure to tell their side of the story as women, African Americans, LGBTQ people, and other marginalized communities have done. Conservatives sought instead to raise mainstream media to the ground. Sykes, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, and others advanced a narrative in which no institution or authoritative source, not statistics, not science, not history, not polls, not CBS, not CNN, the Miami Herald, or the New York Times is legitimate if it contradicts conservative orthodoxy or simply questions the latest harebrained conspiracy theory. The result has been nothing less than the unraveling of the American mind. We have become a nation of junk history, junk science, junk fact, junk logic, junk thought. A nation where not knowing things is no longer a bar to high office and may even be an advantage. A nation where it is necessary to be debate whether a birth certificate is really a birth certificate. <laughs> and Trump followers think the election will be rigged. Nor are bizarre conspiracy theories limited to the right. Has anyone who has ever argued the supposed link between vaccines and autism can attest? They have infiltrated the left too. This, then, is the legacy of modern conservatism, a nation where left and right have no real ability to communicate across the issues that divide, because in a fundamental sense they have no language in common. We cannot confront our pressing problems because we cannot even discuss them. It is gratifying to hear Sykes admit conservative culpability, but any temptation to gloat is drowned by the reality of America's plight. Don't forget, we've now had a generation of young people come of age with ignorance, intransigence, incoherence as their daily norm. The damage from that is profound and will not be easily fixed. It took us years to get here. It will take years more to find our way home. Yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> I see so many funny cartoons on social media. You know, and any time they have uh, redneck teabaggers in a cartoon, uh -huh. he, instead of calling them Barack Obama, they call him Obama. You know, like they try to try to do hillbilly talk. I'm, I'm usually pretty good at that. Them, them, door down and yonder. You know, but you know what? The average American today is by far dumber than I originally thought. The typical American. They, they just they they cut their nose off to spite their face. They they shoot themselves in the foot. They just. Uh, they, they, they don't want to let go. Hold on. They don't want to let go of uh, the very system that causes all their uh, their uh, 
problems in life. Yeah. They don't want to accept change. That's for sure. I mean, everything's before us. I mean, er information is out there for anybody who's willing to learn. Political definitions is easily had. The Bible, the King James Bible is online. That's easily had. You know, I mean, everything is easily had with this high technology. Except an open mind. Because you need an open mind to, to absorb, to learn anything and to, to learn and understand it. You know, it's uh, 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 like uh, an idiot will take the words uh, socialism, and communism, and uh, throw it all in, in the same basket, you know, or uh, uh, extremism and ra radical, those words, they'll throw that together too. Like, like uh, Harry Reid's statement about, you know, like putting Vladimir Putin in the same category as ISIS. It, 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 how could it be if, if Putin is bombing the hell out of ISIS? No, no correlation, no, no relation to one another. It's, uh, it's the land of confusion. Uh, was that a Billy Joel song, right? An old oh, Billy Joel song. That's Phil Collins. Oh, I'm sorry, not Billy Joel. That was that was pressure. Billy Joel was pressure. Uh, Phil Collins, Genesis, the land of confusion. Phil Collins. Yeah, that's with right. The, with the Reagan mask. With the Reagan, with the Reagan puppet. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The land of confusion. Yeah. Phil Collins is making a comeback. Oh, he is. Yes, he is. Anybody uh, important die recently? that we could uh, say more yes, viable Yes, yes. Robert Vaughn. He the did? The man from Uncle. The man from Uncle? The man who said Uncle? That's correct. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it usually comes in threes. Mukimi. believe he was 81. All right, rest in peace, Robert Vaughn. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um... So anyway, um, you want to break early? No, I got a change right, of subject here. Okay, you know, I'm kind of. Uh, well, you, we got time for for a sizable uh, reading, isn't it? So, Bernie Bird. <laughs> of course we do. Of course. All right. My best friend Kate approached me on a matter I'm uncomfortable with. Oh, uh, one of these. For the last 12 years, we've, we have laughed, cried, consulted on everything we struggle with, and shared our joys. <laughs> Kate has a great marriage. I'm struggling with the decision to remain in mine. Recently, Kate, her husband, and I were on an outing when they mentioned a menage a trois. They mentioned it. They mentioned it. So that means he's been secretly discussing menage a trois with the other woman. They, you said the word they. The husband and wife mentioned it. The husband and wife mentioned menage a trois with... Him. With the friend. The male friend? Yeah. Two guys and one girl? Nah, 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 it's no. a little... Two girls in the one The husband girl. and wife. Mention it to the, to the to female. To the guy. Nah, I'm not, I, no, that's gay. He that wants sounds, the guy to bang his wife. That sounds a little gay. Menage a trois with two men and one woman? Nah. Yeah, nah. huh? Nah, nah. That's usually the way it goes. No, nah, it usually goes, one man is the rooster and he's got two hens. He's doing two chicks. That's an that's an uh, 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 an elevated form. Right. Well, the that's the, the next step. Oh no, you're talking about a gangbang. No. When there's more than one man and only one woman, that's a gangbang, sir. That's what what was called in the old days wife swapping. Well, wife swapping, you have a couple, that's and right. then you have another couple, couple. and they usually they Swap refer wives. to they refer to refer to them as swingers right and they swap yeah right but this happens to be three people 
well, two guys and a, and, and a woman is 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 uh, 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 you know actually, gay gay and hetero. You know, it's actually, a little gay for me. Actually, we don't know yet whether this guy writing the letter is a guy or a girl. Actually, we don't really know. We don't know that. All yet. right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It was obvious to me that they have done this before. Kate has been my closest friend for years, but I now realize there's a side to her I never knew. Uh. My resistance to their suggestion seems to have had no effect on her. Uh. Yet I am wrestling with my feelings. I am trying to ignore this and maintain the friendship we had before. But it has been difficult. I wish I had never known. But now that I do, I need help sorting this out. Dear Amy, as Archie Bunker would say. Amy. Amy. How do you feel about the concept of open marriage? Do you approve or disapprove? When Kate invited you into her marriage, which is what she and her husband did. The dynamic of your longtime friendship was changed. If you still felt the same about her, you wouldn't be writing to me. If you can get past this, you can still be friends. But on some level, your relationship will never be as it was before. She crossed. The boundary. It's not. It's not a marriage by clergy, as Archie Bunker would say. Also, by clergy, <laughs> by clergy. You know, it's a, an open marriage. Would not be approved by a minister or, or a priest. By clergy. Another one. Yeah. I recently moved in with Tim. A man I have been dating for more than a year. Is this thing going to blow up? No. That is a flutter in the blower. Which I had the man here, and he did not fix anything. It's a nickel. Okay. It's hard to get good uh, service and help nowadays. It right. smooths out. Yeah. We are very much in love and plan to be married one day. My problem is, he keeps getting phone calls from old girlfriends. Uh, well, I mean, he didn't live in a bubble before he met her. This morning, someone called, but hung up when I picked up the phone. Oh, uh, that's why, yeah, yeah, that's not good either. Until now, I have trusted Jim completely. Now, I'm afraid, perhaps, we acted too soon in moving it's in together. It's almost like he, he he's hiding something. If, why would a... Uh, yeah, that's not good. You know, if she hears the hang-up. Tim has always remained friends with all of his girlfriends after their relationships ended. Yeah, he not, says they are nothing more than friends now. Bullshit. I think he should have finalized his previous romance too, before I moved in. Very awkward, though, to remain friends with all of them. I believe you should take the initiative in contacting these women and ask them to respect our relationship by not calling. How can I handle this without giving him an ultimatum? Well, you bring the subject up, number one. Dear and, Amy said, you know, she has the right to, to bring it up. If, after one hang-up, you are questioning Tim's commitment to you, you're being unfair. It's possible the hang-up was a wrong number or a telemarketing call and nothing more. Sometimes I get those. I get them all the time. Ask yourself, what it is about a hang-up on the telephone that has made you feel so vulnerable. You knew after you had dated Tim for a while that he's the type of person who maintains friendships after romance fizzles. Yeah, Next. I, don't, I don't. And remember, 
the person he invited to share the nest and build a future was with you. What? Remember that the person he invited to share the nest and build a future was you. Was you. Well. So don't be so. Only time will tell in any relationship. Only time will tell. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a traditional marriage or you got along fantastic at the beginning. And you know, shit happens. You never know. You never know. All right, we're gonna break for lunch. Um, Oh, I'm so glad. The, another reason why I'm, I'm happy the election is over is all those automated political phone calls have stopped. Yeah. Oh my God, I was getting bombarded. Yeah. And Jill Stein's name was never mentioned in any of them. Never. Okay, we're going to break for lunch. And uh, you get a little bit of information, <coughs> a summary about the newsletter. And then we will return for the balance of the show. Because since William... Morrow is retired, but you'll still find out about the newsletter, nevertheless, right? Nevertheless. You'll find out about it. Nonetheless. Nonetheless? And nevertheless. And nevertheless. Doesn't that Bur Doesn't Bernie, Bernie Bird never looked better since he's been hanging out with us. Yeah, okay. Well, we're back. Oh, now we will continue with the... Oh, you have your... Uh, have my dessert. I got one more to suck down. No, I mean your... Um, oh, you have them. Okay. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you weren't ready. I weren't ready. Oh. The blinking game show wheel spins. Past logos for Triscuits, Wheat Thins, and Honey Made before the needle settles at Fig Newtons. What on earth are you talking about? Newtons are made with real fruit and whole grains. True or false? They actually are, but there's a lot of sugar in them. True. The, the, well, it depends on which one you get, but I'd say um, f there is real fig in Fig Newton. And there might be whole, whole wheat in there. A Nabisco representative asks onlookers who are among 10,000 attendees at a conference where dietitians can earn credits for continuing education. And that, and that is part of their curriculum? Talking about Fig Newtons and, 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 uh, and, and, and snacks? The answer the Nabisco representative says is true. Oh, Among the hundreds of exhibits, many focused on items like beans, <laughs> eggs, strawberries, and leafy greens. Oh, okay, that's all right. But big packaged food makers and trade groups also had a presence, emblematic of the complex ties between the food industry and nutritionists. Yeah, what you're talking about is, uh, is toxic uh, crap, the U.S. food industry. And they push by critics to bring greater awareness to corporate influence on the profession. Well, hey, obesity in the United States is at an epidemic proportion. PepsiCo brought a vending machine stocked with Quaker bars. Oh, boy. 
naked juices, and reduced fat Doritos. Unilever showcased Hellman spreads and offered samples of Breyer's ice cream. Nestle displayed bottled water. Nesquik chocolate drinks and Butterfingers candies. Lovely. A sugar association pamphlet suggested sprinkling sugar on vegetables for picky children. Yeah, what about saying no to your children? Did they ever think of that? While the influence of the food corporations on the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and its 75,000 members has come under greater scrutiny. Some see growing sensitivity to ethical and conflict of interest issues. It's been an important topic in the pharmaceutical world and now it's becoming a much more important topic in the nutrition world, said David Wiss a member of Dietitians for Professional Integrity. Oh, God. Professional Integrity, huh? Dietitians that work in hospitals making up garbage uh, uh, hospital food menus. Which has called on the Academy to show greater independence well, from the food industry. Mm. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Shit. There's a pointy, there's a very sharp pointy screw under here that caught my, my jeans. I gotta be careful or do I... Well, what the hell are you putting your jeans under there for? Well, I, cause I, I got no fucking room. <laughs> I gotta put my leg somewhere, but... I don't know, usually they could be hammered bluntly, but I'm afraid it might damage something. Actually, that desk, there's oh, a there's drawer there there's that two. opens up. There's two of them. Under there. Yeah, there. And there's uh, a ream, ream of paper in there and some yeah. other... Well, the, uh, the grayish uh, part. The grayish part. I cannot open it because of a screw coming down through that top board. Yeah. It's, it's stopping the door drawer from opening. So someday, you know. Sure. I mean, there's no hook on it, but still, you know, I don't, I don't want to ruin my pants. There's no hook. It's just it's, it's threads, you know. It's, it's very sharp with threads. The shell of Gawker has settled with Hulk Hogan for $31 million, ending a years-long fight that led to the media company's bankruptcy. Her last name is Gawker? That's correct. That's lovely, the name of the lovely company. name. Huh? The shutdown of Gawker.com and the sale of Gawker's other sites to Spanish-language broadcaster Univision Gawker founder Nick Denton on a Wednesday blog post said, The saga is over. The invasion of privacy case, which centered on a sex tape posted on Gawker.com, resulted in a $140 million verdict won by professional wrestler, former professional wrestler, Colt Hogan. 140 million? That was the original. It became even more notorious when it emerged that Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel had secretly bankrolled the lawsuit. Thiel was outed by a gay, as gay, by Gawker in 2007. The settlement instead means Hogan will get 31 million as well as 45 percent of the proceeds from the potential sale of Gawker.com. 
What happened to the re the balance of this money? Elizabeth Traub, spokeswoman for Hogan's lawyer, said in an emailed statement that all parties have agreed it is time to move on. No, not if somebody's getting more money than Hogan. Hogan's both, they only, they're only entitled to a third. Nobody's getting more than him. Well, what, why, what happened to 140 mil? That was the original. It got whittled down. That's right? correct. That's what always happens. That's what always happens in these cases. Oh, so Hogan's lawyer originally shot pretty high. <laughs> well, I guess so, yeah. But the, uh, it was the jury who gave him that much. Yeah, I don't know if that's what the lawyer is. asked for. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, the whole concept of, a, of, a, of what makes up a jury has always amazed me, you know, I mean, how could you, how could you place important decisions on, on, on the backs of uh, your average Joe Sixpack, <laughs> you know, since your average Joe Sixpack is, is, a, is, a, is a knucklehead. Is a doofus. Is a doofus. Denton said in a, the Wednesday Post that he was confident that an appeals court would have reduced the 140 million verdict, but an all-out war with Thiel would have cost too much and hurt too many people. Thiel had said he would support Hogan, whose real name is Terry Bolia. Mm until his final victory. Denton said Wednesday that as part of the statement, settlement, excuse me, three true stories about Hogan and two others who also had filed suit are being removed from the website. Mm. Very well. A former Fox News host has sued the network. It's ousted chairman and other top executives claiming they retaliated after she detailed unwanted sexual advances made by her one-time boss, Roger Ailes. Andrea Tantaros. Oh, big, big tits Tantaros. Described Fox in the lawsuit filed Monday as sex-fueled, no Playboy Mansion-like cult. No wonder he wanted, he grabbed her, he wanted her. She got, she's got big, full lips and big breasts. She's not blonde, though. She's, uh, she's like, she looks Hispanic. She said after she complained last spring about Ailes one, and one of his top deputies, William Shine, warned her that Ailes was a very powerful man and that she needed to let this thing go. Oh, he never, he never banged her? He just... He, no, he, he just, just approached her. Yeah, yeah, you know... Um, um, well, there is, there is the word no. I don't do that. Yeah, but unfortunately when they say no, they get the shit details and stuff of that nature, you know. Yeah. Wanting them to resign or get the hell out or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They yeah. to retaliate, especially yeah. if you have uh, rich, rich uh, men that are used to getting their way all the time. Ailes may have been the primary culprit, but his actions were condoned by most senior lieutenants who engaged in a concerted effort to silence Tantaros by threats, hey, humiliation, hey, toots. and retaliation. Hey, toots, I'm talking to you. You better shut your mouth. You better close your mouth. You understand what I'm saying? If you know what's good for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. shut your mouth. <laughs> the network said that it could not comment on pending litig lit litigation. Toots. Ailes resigned in July after another 
former anchor Gretchen Carlson <laughs> Gretchen said in a lawsuit that she was fired for refusing his sexual advances. So he, did he ever make a move on Megyn Kelly? Yes, he did. Because Megyn Kelly had some provocative uh, photographs. Yes, he did, but she's still working there. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny, all those women that used to do uh, take photos with, uh, you know, very scantily clad photos, they were the ones to, uh, you know, uh, make a big deal about what Donald Trump said and uh, you know saying that women are not sex objects and then they, they would show pictures they would show photos of them wearing uh, lacy underwear and their ass cheeks hanging out hey, hey you know in other words don't be a hypocrite don't be a hypocrite um, and blah, 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 blah. since then I have a the New York Magazine reported that a former booker for the network, Lori Loom, alleged that she had been sexually harassed by Ailes over 20 years. Lori Loon? Loon. L-U-H-N. Dantaro says her lawsuit is meant to give life to the saying that the fish stinks from the head. <laughs> Claiming she also endured unwanted attention from others at hey, Fox News. Hey, Toots, you're working at Fox News here. You know, you're getting paid a lot of money. I'm the Bosch. I'm the Bosch. I'm the Bosch. I gotta be treated right. I'm the Bosch. Okay. Toots. Yeah. <laughs> Among them, former Republican Senator Scott Brown of Massachusetts and Fox host Bill O'Reilly, neither of whom is listed as a defendant in the lawsuit. Well, remember Bill O'Reilly and his loofah sponge, you know? No, I don't know. With that know. woman. What? I don't, I don't know about he, the... Uh, he, uh, 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 the woman in the shower and etc. and he wanted a loofah sponger and all this crap. That's it? He settled. That's all he wanted to do was loofah sponge. He settled sponger. with her. I don't, well, he wanted something else, I'm sure. Did he loofah sponge her? I don't know. Oh, how for, far he got? For that, he got sued. Just I, for just for wanting to loofah sponge, or or he did loofah sponge her. I don't know how far he got. Oh, in other words, she was bathing. Were they dating? I, no. Was it? Was he there? Well, these she, are advances by men. They don't want. So that she was, she was taking a shower on on the premises. I don't know if she was taking a shower. He wanted to loofah her. Well, he wanting to loofah somebody or bang them is not actually loofah loofing them, loofering them, <laughs> and but maybe and copulating with them. But maybe he had power over her in some way, shape, or form. So he threatened her. Yeah. He threatened her. Hey, Toots. Hey, thought you better uh, let me loofah your uh, your ass. Scott Brown made a number of sexually inappropriate comments to her uh, while filming on set in August 2015. You know what? And put his hands on her lower waist. You know what? You know what? I think a lot of this is uh, 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 just um, grabbing pussy? No, no. Like Mr. Trump said? Coochie, coochie grabbing. No, a lot of this is um, going way too far because of these man hating uh, lesbians causing all this trouble, the feminist movement. Because they're man haters. That's what, they don't want men and women to hook up anymore. Well, they don't want men to have power over them in such a work situation. No, that well, when a, when a man hears "No, I am not that kind of girl," they are supposed to respect Back off. respect that, and uh, and uh, respect that. Yes, and and back off, and 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 cease and desist to do it again. Cease and desist. O'Reilly asked her to stay with him in his. Long Island home and told her he believed she had a wild side. Hey, I'm Bill O'Reilly and I think you got a wild side. A representative for O'Reilly didn't return a request for comment. Brown said 
Tantaros' claims about on-air green room interactions are false. The green room. That's where everybody sits, you know, like on the Johnny Carson show. They have food. Yeah, they have a little, uh, or, or an honor bar or whatever they have. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, they don't have, like, private little booths where people no. go. No. Tantaros' legal battles with Fox began last winter when the network said she had breached her employment contract by writing a book without getting clearance. But, Tantaro says in her complaint that Fox executives used the dispute about the book to try to silence her. Hey, Tantaro, you got big jokes. I'm paying you a lot of money to work for Fox News. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Antaro says she was subjected to demeaning conduct. Here we go. Wah, 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 wah. Such as having to strip in front of Fox News wardrobe personnel when she picked her on air clothing. Oh, yeah? Wow, well, she's, she's very attractive. Uh, she had to strip, huh? Yeah. She had to strip. Oh, but it's different when they strip for money, you know. Oh, well, that's because they make the choice. Right. Well, yeah, they don't they don't get like blackmailed. Yeah, it's know. called blackmail. Do this or yeah. else. Yeah. Hey you. Hold on. This always clears my sinuses. Oh, mine are clogged. Hey you over there. You better do this or else. Ah, oh, hmm. That really cleared me up. I'm your boss. I have been a supporter of Governor Christie since the get-go. <sighs> but I must be blunt uh -oh. and ask, is he really interested in being governor of New Jersey? Mm, nah, he has other ambitions. It is generally recognized that the governorship of New Jersey is a powerful role by the design of our state constitution. It is not a part-time commitment. Our state has too many unresolved issues to be handled by someone whose energies and focus are elsewhere. It's a complex state to run. You're surrounded by major cities, you know. The current void in the governor's office is not helping those who voted him into office as a change agent. The overall political landscape has changed him to a standard politician of, okay, what is next for me? For me, yeah. He has been in a job search mode for more than the last year. If the state had a board of directors, it, Go ahead. it would have been announced months ago that Christie had decided to leave his position as governor to pursue other opportunities and spend more time with his family. Well, if he does that, then his kids won't get that much to eat. <laughs> the Bible states that a man cannot serve two masters. Uh, it is time for our governor to pick one. I really don't care which one he picks. Just pick one. At this stage, being that he's, um, um, well, he's coming to the end of his term, isn't he? When does his term end? It's either about a year or something less than that. Speaking of Mr. Christie, got another one. Huh? During an engagement two weeks ago, Governor Christie attempted to influence New Jersey's 2017 gubernatorial race by saying, if we elect a Democrat, taxes will go up. Yeah, they should go up on the ridge. However, through ignoring the financial condition of New Jersey, he will leave behind a state sufficiently in ruin that tax increases the only choice. 
used to maintain financial solvency. Regarding the Transportation Trust Fund, no one wants more taxes. However, options are between the proverbial rock and a hard place. My calculations show a gasoline tax of 23 cents per gallon, resulting in an average added tax burden of $146.36 per year. If our infrastructure is ignored, it is also reasonable that related delays due to poor conditions will conservatively increase commuting by five minutes or more per day, 20 hours per year. This values lost personal time at $7.32 per hour. Additional costs include greater vehicle repairs, loss of efficiency to the state economy. New Jersey is a transportation-based economy, a corridor to New England, New York, and the Southeast. Also ignoring the growing pension crisis adds millions more each month to future financial obligations. And Governor Christie knows that by ignoring the problems, he will achieve his goal of claiming he never raised taxes. Instead, he will force these liabilities on the next government who, based on Christie's poll numbers, will be a Democrat. Yes, Christie is correct. Our next governor will have to raise taxes, thanks to him. Yeah, but on, on, on what group? That's the problem. People, you know what's going to happen. People don't want to accept real change, and if you don't have real change, it's going to be business as usual. The middle class are going to get hammered <laughs> year after year, decade after decade. Ever since uh, Ronald Reagan did it, election after election. Yep, people, people uh, will get. Was it Grover Cleveland that said people will get the, uh, the, the the type of government that they deserve? Right. So how are we doing on time? Let's see. Well, it depends on when you want to break up. Yeah, you know what? Pick pick a good one. Doctors are warning about vitamin D again. What? First they embrace vitamin D, and now they're warning. And it's not the we need more news you might expect. Instead, they say there's too much. Needless testing and too many people taking too many pills for a problem that few people truly have. Vitamin D is, is, is just that good. The nutrient is crucial for strong bones and may play a role in other health conditions. Uh, it does play a role in the immune system, it does. Though that is far less certain. Yeah, right. Misunderstandings about the recommended amount of vitamin D have led to misinterpretation of blood tests and many people thinking they need more than they really do. Autoimmune afflictions have seen wonders with vitamin D. Some experts who helped set the levels right Less than 6% of Americans ages 1 through 70 are deficient. And only 13% are in danger of not getting enough. That's concerning, but these levels of deficiency do not constitute a pandemic. Blood tests for vitamin D levels not advised unless a problem like bone loss is suspected. 
under Medicare. There was an 83-fold increase from 2000 to 2010 to 8.7 million tests last year at $40 a piece. It's Medicare's fifth most common test, just after cholesterol levels, and ahead of blood sugar, urinary tract infections, and prostate cancer screening. I'm not sure when it got popular to check everybody for vitamin D deficiency, but patients often ask for especially baby boomers. Vitamin D pill use grew from 5% of Americans in 1999 to 19% in 2012. That may be due to many reports suggesting harm from too little of the sunshine vitamin all of that because our skin makes vitamin D from sun exposure. It's tough to get enough in the winter or from dietary sources like milk. And with, with, with most uh, young people and children spending their times indoors playing video games and being online, uh, there, there are more uh, cases of, I would say, vitamin D deficiency because of lack of uh, uh, UVA, UVB uh, sunlight. You know, I mean, when I was a kid, we were outside. Hello. We, we didn't know any better. Hello. You know, we, we didn't have high-tech toys and computers and video games. So we were outside. We played outside, so you know, they don't have that today. Uh, what do you think? One more? One more, dear Amy. One more, that's it. Oh, another one? Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Alright, go ahead. It has been two years, and I haven't been able to get over my first love. Oh, God. I just graduated from high school. I'll be 18. Wah, wah. But I still can't get used to the idea that he's gone. And and they actually, dear, dear Abby, actually puts this in print about some little snot-nosed kid. When we broke up, he made me feel like dirt. She's a kid. She's got a whole life ahead of her. We had been a couple since my freshman year. Come on. And he dumped me at the beginning of my junior year oh. because... Oh. I didn't want to give him my virginity. The, 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 the boy should be out there enjoying himself, not settling down. Later, I discovered he had been cheating on me with my best friend. Now that's common. That's common. Dear Amy, answer. Why did you allow him to make you feel like dirt? Be glad you didn't have sex with him! If you had, he would probably have cheated on you anyway. Correct. You have your whole life ahead of you! Please don't waste one more second of it looking over your shoulder and pining for someone who would punish you for hanging on to your values. I blame dear, dear Abby, or Abby, whatever, for for taking up space in her <laughs> in her article for an 18 or or a teenager, teenager uh, love problems. Give me a break. You did the right thing, and you should have no regrets. Good. Help me. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's enough. That's, that's it, man. That's enough. Okay, listen, thank you for joining us for our big uh, post-Doomsday uh, Election 2016 show. Um, uh, the next holiday will be Thanksgiving. 
what, what is that like? Uh, uh, two weeks. 24. Ah, we got plenty of time. Well, turkey day! Turkey day! Yeah. I like turkey. I like turkey. But Me I'm going to try... If I, if, I, if I have to resort to making my own... Oh, boy. Because uh, there won't be any relatives... Get a turkey breast. Well... I so? could, I could, no, I, I don't mind getting a small turkey, Butter? but a, a small one, not, you know, nothing big, because it's only going to be like me, really, and, uh, so get a turkey uh, breast. I, I want to try, um, roasting it upside down so the turkey bastes itself, like the old lady says on TV, you know, the dark meat will be on top, and then the fat will drip down. And, and we'll moisturize uh, and, uh, the breast to keep it dr from getting dry. I'm going to try that. Well, remember, the the white meat uh, does not take as much long to cook as the dark meat. So, and they put it in together, you're going to have a problem. Well, you got to. It's not going to be juicy. It's going to be dry. Well, but if it's but the, but if the <coughs> um. If the white meat is on the bottom, it's going to be sitting in turkey fat, which will oh, which different. will keep it from drying out. That's it's kind of similar to when you go to a Brazilian rodizio or you can eat barbecue. You always see the white turkey breast wrapped in bacon. There you go. Which incidentally is delicious. You know, on a kebab, yeah. it's on a skewer. Yeah. And that's that. Listen, have a good weekend. All right. I'm getting hungry talking like this. Well, my chicken and potatoes were pretty good. Yeah. Well, you finish up your dessert. That's all. All right. Bye-bye.